everyone guys in this video we are going to see an example of second order transient analysis and in this particular problem we are going to see how to derive the governing differential equation for the following circuit then we are going to express the answer in standard form and we are going to find the static gain natural frequency and damping ratio static gain is in if you look at the standard form of a governing differential equation that look like this and static gain is this k value and this natural frequency is this omega n value and damping ratio is this zeta value okay so these are the three things we are going to find after we derive the difference differential equation now let's go ahead and do that now first uh, to derive the differential equation what we are going to do is we are going to use the Kirchhoff's voltage law and in Kirchhoff's voltage law you know that the addition of all the voltage in a loop should be equal to zero or in other way you can say voltage in should be equal to voltage out in our case voltage in is x of t so x of t should be equivalent to addition of all the voltages voltage across this resistor voltage across this inductor and also voltage across this capacitor so we can say x of t is equal to vr plus vl plus vc instead of writing vc we can write y of t because voltage across the capacitor is already in terms of voltage that is y of t so we can write y of t okay and vr we can replace this vr with ir because we know that v is equal to ir so we can replace this one with i i is a function of time so i i of t times r plus vl so in order to bring the differential equation you have to know these two equations this is one and this is the other one and in this one if you look at this one vl is equal to l times dil over dt so i'm going to replace this vl with this equation so this is going to become l dil over dt and i just keep the y of t as it is so this is going to be just plus y of t okay and also i of t we can replace i of t with c dy of t over dt so this one is going to become c dy of t over dt then if you look at this one if you look at the current going through the resistor and the inductor it's the same current right because this is in series so the current is going to be equal so instead of writing dil we can replace that one with dit because il is equal to i of t okay so and we know that i of t is equal to c dy of t over dt so if we do that here this is going to become l d square y of t divided by dt square okay i just uh, plug this i of t value here and also this one multiply by c so we are going to have lc d square y of t over dt square and then here we have y of t and all of them are equal to x of t and now we have a se second order differential equation but this is not in standard form because of this coefficient in front of this second order to have the standard form we had to get rid of this lc right because in second order standard form we shouldn't have any coefficient in front of the second order so we had to eliminate this one to eliminate this one what we are going to do is we are going to divide everything by lc and if you do that this is going to become 1 over lc x of t times if you divide this one by lc and also i forgot to put one thing here we have a resistor already okay because we replace i of t with this one but the resistor remains still remains here okay r of c dy of t over dt now if you divide, divide this one with l o l c this is going to become r over l times dy of t over dt and if you divide this one by l c this is going to become just d square y of t over dt square and here we are going to have 1 over lc times y of t okay now we have divided everything by lc now what we are going to do is we are going to write this one in decreasing order our highest order is second order so second order is going to be the first one so this is going to be d square y of t over dt square and then we are going to write the first order first order is this one plus r over l dy of t over dt and then we are going to write this one 
this is zero order because we don't have any derivative so this is going to be 1 over lc y of t and anything other than y of t we keep this in the other side of the equation so here we have x of t this is going to be just others in the other side of the equation 1 over lc x of t so this is our standard form of the governing differential equation for this circuit now the next thing is so we have taken care of this part we have write the first question the second question we the question is asking determine the static gain natural frequency and the damping ratio and if you look at this standard form for the governing differential equation that is given by this right and from this one we know that the the values before the first order differential equation is equal to 2 zeta omega n in our case this one is equal to 2 zeta omega n is equal to this value r over l okay so we can say 2 zeta omega n is equal to r over l and also omega n square is the value that is in front of y of t in our case that is 1 over lc okay so we can say omega n square is equal to 1 over lc and in the last one k omega n square is the value in front of x of t in our case that is 1 over lc so k omega n square is equal to 1 over lc from this one if you compare these two k omega n square and omega n square these two are 1 over lc it means k is equal to 1 in that way only we can have the same value right so this k is equal to 1 so we have found out one solution that is our static gain now using that we, we if k is 1 and we know the omega n square is equal to 1 over lc therefore omega n is going to be 1 over square root of lc so that's our natural frequency and the third one we had to find is we had to find the damping ratio to find the damping ratio we are, we are going to use this equation that is 2 zeta omega n is equal to r over l and if you rearrange for zeta this is going to become r over 2 omega n l and we know that omega n is equal to 1 over square root of lc and if you place this one here this is going to be 1 over and if it's 1 over it's going to flip around and go to the top so that's going to be just square root of lc on top and we can rewrite this one as okay, let's write with a different color we can rewrite this one as r times square root of l times square root of c and 2 times l we can write, rewrite this one as square root of l times square root of l in that way we can cancel this square root of l to, on top and also this square root of l and finally we will get r over 2 square root of c over l and that's going to be our damping ratio and that's how we do this kind of problems i hope this helps thanks for watching